Okay, so today we're going to cover the second part of compound, uh, chapter 4, which is compound interest. All right, so the learning outcome for compound interest, you must know how to um, derive the formula, you must know how to fill up the formula, you must know how to identify compound interest. So what is compound interest? So basically in English, compound means you're accumulating something. So it's the same. It's when your interest is added to the principal. So today, Alex borrows 1000 So next year, he needs to pay $100, let's say interest. But what happens is they add this interest into the principal. So your new principal is 1100 So in the second year, the interest that you pay will be 110 So compound interest is when your principal keeps increasing, meaning you take your interest and add back to your principal. So your principal keeps increasing, therefore your interest will increase. And these are how investment schemes actually work. All right, so let's look at an example. You would not need to use this table because you will be given a formula, it will be easier. So at the start of the period, your loan is 1000. Let's see, compound interest 10% becomes 100, 1100, right? So let's look at simple interest before this. If you look at the table on the right, the column, all the way is 100, all together five years, 500. It's simple as that. This is what we have done just before this, simple interest. Compound interest, can you see the 100 is added back to the principal? Your new principal is 1,100. Then 10% interest is charged on it, become 110. Then you add back, becomes 1,210. And the 1,210 is actually your new principal now. All right, so it will go on and on until the five years. But don't worry, you don't, you don't need to do it one by one because you will be doing, you will be learning this formula, which will be given to you in your exams. F equals to P times 1 plus R over N and T. So what is F? Future value. What is future value? The value at the end of the term. P is present value. Plus 1, 1 plus R. R is the annual interest rate. N is the number of times you compound. What am I talking about number of times I compound? The number of times you take your interest and add back to your principal. Okay? To the power of N times T. T is years. So your question will already tell you compounded how many times, so you just follow. So these are the terms that you need to get used to. Compound annually, the N is equals to 1. Annually means you do it only once a year, meaning you only take your interest and add back to your principal once a year. N equals to 2, semi-annually, twice a year. N equals to 4, quarterly, meaning you do it every 3 months, so your N is equal to 4. <laughs> Monthly, your N is equal to 12. All right, and then you have weekly compounding, which is 52 weeks. All right, and days, which is 365. You won't see weekly and daily that much, but what you will see is the first four, the last four, sorry, annually, semi-annually, quarterly, and monthly. So you just need to follow and plug it into the formula. All right, so let's look at some examples here. Find the simple interest at seven. So if it's simple interest, it's easy. We have just done it. You just have to multiply and find it. Okay, let's look at this example, which is in your manual, okay, uh, in your compound interest part. Find the future value of 20,000 invested 6% for three months. Here, they didn't tell you compounded quarterly or compounded annually or whatever. So this is not compound interest. This is simple interest. Compound interest will tell you when to compound with what, how many times to compound. So you just follow, okay? So 20,000 is your principal. Your rate is 6%. Your time, why is it 3 over 12? Because time should always be in terms of years. So your interest will be 300 after you multiply. Future value, principal plus interest, 20,300. So that's not really a problem. So you will see this example. So when you look at this as an example, I want you to see, oh yeah, they didn't say compound. So this is not compound interest. The next formula. Compute the compound amount. Compound amount is future value. When 1,000 is invested for five years at the nominal rate of 8% quarterly. So what I want you to do is extract out the important information. Okay, 1,000 invested, meaning 1,000 is my principal. Rate, R is 8%. T, time, which is five years. And your N is four. Why my N is four? N is the number of times you compound, right? So look in the question. You only need... Four things, principal, 
time, rate, and number of compounding periods. So compounded quarterly, your n is equal to 4. So now all you need to do is plug it into the formula, okay? So f is what we want to find your future value. Principal is 1,000 times 1 plus r. What is my r? Interest rate, 0 0.08. Divide by 4. What is 4? Compounded quarterly. My quarterly is 4. To the power of 4 times 5. N times T. Alright. Equal to 1485.95. If you don't know how to put this in the calculator, please reach out to me. I will teach you. You try to do it one by one. Don't go and put it in one shot. Okay. You do it 0 0.08. Divide 4. Answer plus 1. Then the whole answer to the power of 20. N times 1000. You can do it one by one. Actually, it's better approximately how long when you see how long they want you to find time it takes to obtain when you see obtain that means you want to get 9250 that means 9250 is your future value when 5000 is invested so 5000 is your principal for x years at the nominal rate of 8% compounded quarterly so write down first what you have your principal 5000 Future value 9250, your rate is 0 0.08, your time you don't know, you're looking for time. N is equal to 4. Why is your N equal to 4? Compounded quarterly. Alright, everybody got that? Compounded quarterly. So F is equal to P times 1 plus R over N. So we're just going to fill up the formula. Future value 9250. Principal 5000 times 1 plus, what is your R? 0 0.08. Divide by compounded quarterly, you divide by 4 to the power of 4 times t, which is compounded quarterly times the time. Okay, so now you want to find time. Time is a power, it's in indices, so you need to apply log. Alright, so when you need to apply log, there are two ways to do it. One is you see the way I've done it here, which I'll show you in a bit. And one more, you do it manually. Actually, it's the same way. So one more is this way. You're going to plug it into the formula as per usual. F equals to P times 1 plus R over N to the power of N over T, N times T. So future value 9250 equals to 5000 times 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4. Close the bracket to the power of 4 times T. 4 times T because time is what you're looking for, right? So we try to simplify it as much as we can. Bring the 5000 down. Do you see that? You get 9250 over 5000 equals to, I solve what's in the bracket. 0 0.08 divided 4 is 0 0.02. 1 plus 0 0.02 is 1.02 to the power of 4t. So now this is what you got. You want to solve t, right? So you need to apply log. Whenever you have an unknown in the power and you want to solve it, you have to apply log. So if you apply log to the left, you have to apply log to the right. It works both ways. So log 9250 over 5000 is equal to log 1.02. So what will happen is the 40 will come down and it will come in front. Okay, so then you will be able to solve it. Can you see 40 in the next step is equal to the log 9250 over 5000 divided by log 1.02. So what I want you to do is actually put it into the calculators one shot. You don't know how to use the calculators, please get in touch with me and I will teach you. Okay, put it into the calculator one shot. Don't round off anything, alright? So you will get approximately 8 years or 7.8 years. If the question asks you to change it to years and months, you do so. If they don't ask you anything, normally you put it in two decimal places, alright? So this is the formula. This is basically the formula that you will see in your manual, which is exactly what I've done, but I've done it step by step. This is the, if you want to use this and put it in one shot, I'm good. So log future value over principal over n times log 1 plus r over n. Okay, so you can just put it in one shot as well. I'm more than happy if you do it. Okay, so let's look at the examples here. Uh, 5,000 is invested at 5% per annum compound interest, compounded annually. How much is the investment worth after four years? So you just plug everything into the formula and you work it out. <laughs> okay, so same goes to example five. You put everything into the formula and you work it out. So this is the working and everything. So it shouldn't be a problem. So you just follow. Compounded annually, N is one. Compounded every... 
So you just follow. Compounded annually, your n is 1. Can you see that? Compounded every 6 months. Every 6 months means semi-annually, meaning your n is 2. Compounded quarterly, your n is 4. So you just plug it into the formula and work it out. All right? Moving forward, exercise 4.2. I'll go through the first, four, first few questions because the first few questions is actually simple interest questions. So if 1,000 is invested at 8% compounded annually, how much? You just plug it in the formula and get it. Same goes to the second part. The third one is really simple. If this amount represents 300 plus interest, how much interest? You just have to minus. 318 minus 300 is $18. Okay, that's all you want. You only want the interest amount. If they say interest rate, you're going to find percentage. But they want interest, you just find the value. Same goes to number four. You just minus and you will find it as $72. Harit deposited $800 in a savings account at the end of the year. He receives $40 simple interest. What rate? Now you want R. So R equals to PRT, right? From previous we have learned. So R is equal to I over PT. So what is your I? $40. Over P, what is P? $800. What is time? One. At the end of the year, meaning it was only for one year. So you're finding rate. Don't forget to multiply with 100%, all right? Okay, number six, Pedro buys a 10,000 three months certificate of deposit. He receives simple interest of 350. What was the rate? Same thing. You're going to find rate I equals to PRT. You want to find R, I over PT. Okay, same goes to number seven. Same goes to number eight. Okay, number nine is easy. Is your I equals to PRT formula. All right. Okay, now moving on to number 10, you're going to fill up this table. I want you to use the formulas that we have learned. Future value is just plug everything in compounded monthly your n is equals to 12 principal is 6000 r is six percent your time t is four so plug it into the calculator and you should be able to find same goes to number 11 your n will be two it's semi-annually right number 12 you need to apply log you don't know how to apply log please reach out to me and i will teach you you must learn how to apply log it's very important all right and then you will have uh continuously for the rest so you just fill up the values Okay, and then as we go on, I've actually highlighted the important words that you need to take. How long you want to find time to obtain approximately, when you want to obtain something, the 7,400 is your future value from an investment of 4.5. Your principal is 4.5. 5% is your interest, compounded quarterly, your N is 4. So you are going to plug everything into the formula. You're going to apply log and you're going to find the time for me, all right? Now this one, I'm just going to, I've written down this formula because it, it's a constant trouble within students. How much compound interest will you pay if you borrow 25,000? That's your principal times 1 plus 15% is your interest, 0 0.15, divide by 12 because compounded monthly. N times T, right? N is 12. Your T, your time should always be in terms of years. That's why I've put it as 13 over 12. You understand? Okay, always put the, don't get confused. Your time is what? In terms of years. So make sure you just divide everything. If it's months, you divide with 12. Okay, so you plug everything in the calculator. You will get 4381. If you don't know how to do it, please reach out to me. I will teach you, all right? So I've highlighted everything on the bottom. So now here, they've. I mean, go back to this question, uh, the, set, the compound interest formula. They want When they want interest, you need to take future value minus principal, okay? You should be able to get the value. All right, so I've highlighted all the important questions here, so it shouldn't be a problem all the way till the last question. So I would uh, just use the whatever that is given there and try to do it. Okay, so compounded monthly, you see like the one in this slide, there is Maria Juarez and her brother-in-law. They decide to borrow 15,000 is the principal. They get the money at 9% compounded monthly. So your N is equal to 12. Your time is 9 months, right? So when you plug it in the formula, must be 9 over 12. You must always be in terms of years. Okay? All right. Same goes to all this. So I really think that you should be able to... Make. The last one, it is a bit confusing because... Uh, number 34, yeah? 8% compounded quarterly. Compounded quarterly means your N is equal to 4. And they say, how much interest will she earn if she deposits 1,800? So 1,800, it meets the rule, right? They just say that you need 1,000 or more. She meets the rule. 
must be deposited at least six months. She's depositing it for two years. So here your principal is 1,800. Your time is two years. Your R is 8%, 0.08. Your N is four. All right, so shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so uh, these are the solutions for exercise 4.2 from number one all the way to number 34. So if you have any issues, just let me know. I will actually work it out and teach you, all right?